Hi, Robert here, and this is my tutorial on how to pin a miniature with a pin vise drill. I decided to make this tutorial because, because pinning your miniatures is pretty much essential for any wargamer miniature collector with anything more than a passing interest in the hobby. At some point you're going to have a model that just won't stay together with glue alone. You'll need to pin it. For this, you'll need a pin vise drill with drill bits and you'll also need some fairly thin but tough wire, like that found in paper clips or even some book bindings. You'll also need super glue, the model you want to work with, and some blue tack. And lastly, you'll need a clipper to concut metal. For your pin vise drill, all you really need to do is make sure that if you hold the drill like this, you can comfortably hold it in your hand while still being able to drill straight. That's the only requisite I've found from buying drills. For the most part, it's fine to just mix any brand's drill bits with any other brand's pin vices, so don't worry too much. Personally, I much prefer the drill bits that have a thicker stem. If they cost extra, I still think it's worth it. And to be honest, I always seemed to struggle just getting the small drill bits to even stay in place when they have a thin stem. When it comes to wires, you'd actually be surprised at the variety available. It's fairly easy to source both thin and thick wires. Paper clips without paint tend to be thinner, as are the thin metal guitar strings. Paper clips with paint or the wires from book bindings tend to be thicker, and it's good to have a mix of both thin and thick. Now, before I start pinning a model, I often do a dry run build. This is where I put the model together using a small amount of blue tack to see if there are any flaws in the molding or construction issues that might cause problems for me. This is also the point with second-hand models where you can check if there's any old glue or paint that could cause a construction issue. If I try to pin the model straight up, I could easily magnify any of these small issues. For instance, the top piece of this epic leviathan doesn't fit snugly to the main body of the model, so if I pin it badly, it could remain at an angle to the rest of the model. The more complicated the build, the more important it is to pay attention to this, especially if you're working with metal or resin. It's also important to plan where you will drill, as well as what angle you will drill at to get maximum space for the wire, while keeping the integrity of the model and ensuring the wire has a relatively straight path through both parts of the model. So to explain that, at this top part of the Leviathan, I could drill at a downwards angle to get a maximum spacing for the wire, and I could still keep model integrity, since the model is very thick at this section. However, I would be better served going perpendicular to the drilled surface, as this way it's easier to have the wire follow a straight path through both parts of the model, which will prevent any bends at the join between the two parts. At this point, I then pick an appropriate drill bit size while ensuring I have appropriately sized wire to use with it. I'm going to go for a 1.4 millimeter drill bit, which is fairly large. If you're no good at guessing how far you have gone, then just regularly take the drill out and check how far in it is, and make sure to leave some space so you don't pop out the other side. Then, to make the mirrored hole on the piece opposite the one you've just worked on, I have a nice trick I always use. Put some blue tack on the side you haven't worked on yet, so it stays on. Then, press the two sides together, making sure they are correctly positioned based on your previous dry run build, so that there's going to be no errors. Then, take them apart, being careful not to slide them across each other as you do so, this isn't an Oreo, you need to lift it off. The mirrored side will have a nub of blue tack sticking up at the exact point where you're going to want to drill. I find it easier to just drill through the blue tack into the model for a bit before even attempting to remove any blue tack. Be very careful at this early stage to keep the drill straight on and do not allow it to slip from its point of entry. Repeat the drilling process until you have a counterpart hole in the mirrored piece. If you are working on a larger piece such as this, you then continue on choosing a few key locations that will also be pipped. Do keep in mind it's very important to check what other parts of the model need pinning first. 
So for instance, this front part of the Leviathan can't have a pin joining these two parts because I'm going to need to pin this front turret into place right here. Instead, I can just make the next drill hole closer to the tracks where I'm not going to have any interference. Once you have a few paired holes, and three is enough for this model, you can put the model together. Get your thicker wire and estimate how long your wire needs to be. It's better to overestimate the size needed as you can always trim it down with your clippers. Do a dry run build again with all the wires in place. Lift off one half and super glue the three pieces of wire into one side. Make sure they are all pointing up as straight as you can get them and then put dabs of super glue on the, on the other side's holes and even a little bit on the length of the wires by dipping the wires into the super glue nozzle. Put the part in place carefully without being too slow and press it firmly together and ensure all sides line up correctly just like in your dry run. Some models can never fully line up due to mold lines or bad casts. Those scenes will need to receive putty or green stuff, but that's a tutorial for another day. Once you've covered the basics of pinning, you can take it to another level by trying your hand at smaller holes using thin drill bits and the smaller wires that you have available. Pick a drill bit that's about 0.8 millimeters in width or maybe even thinner ensure both parts of the model have reasonably flat surfaces and are visibly thicker than the drill bit you hope to use. Keep in mind that if you are drilling out too high a percentage of the thickness of the model, you will weaken the overall structure, which means, especially with these thinner pieces, you will either need to drill until you get to a thicker part, like a hand or, or some other part of the model, or preferably use an even smaller drill bit and even smaller piece of wire. If you don't do this, the part will break at the very end point of the hole you drilled. This is why, if you're pinning a weapon, you don't want to drill just through the shaft of the weapon, you need to get to a thicker part of the model, as the thicker part of the model can cope with the stress point created at the end of a drilled hole. If you have the stress point at the end of a drilled hole, in the middle of a shaft of a weapon, it is going to cause a lot of stress no matter how well the wire is pinned in and it is almost definitely going to break your model. Lastly, the wire used will have to be kept as straight as possible for pinning. If you've bended wire that doesn't write itself easily, then find a straight bit to use or find some method of straightening the wire out. Before you even cut the piece you need, just straighten it out because it's really hard to straighten the thin wires when they're only a couple of centimeters long. So I, I often, when I get new wires, straighten it out into lengths before I do any kind of other work with pinning. Okay, that should cover most of your pinning needs. If you have any questions or problems with your pinning, feel free to leave a message in the comments. And please do like the video if you, if you liked the video, and subscribe if you want more tutorials like this one.